Hey, everybody. Uh, w welcome to the webcast. Uh, today, we're going to talk about IBM WebSeer automation and how that really represents uh, a bigger picture around the WebSeer portfolio, which is really the how WebSeer and automation is helping uh, the future of operations and security. Uh, I do want to note very briefly that we will be, you know, talking about some forward-looking direction, uh, not necessarily dates, but sort of direction and intent. Uh, so I want everyone to know that, you know, those statements are forward-looking, they are subject to change, uh, but they do sort of represent the, uh, the, the roadmap direction that we see uh, from within WebSeer Automation. So part of how WebSeer Automation came about is we've been having lots of conversations with customers around where their challenges are. And through that series of conversations, which really is ongoing, um, it really boils down to three main areas. Number one, we see an increase in complexity in the way app applications are uh, built, managed, and deployed, right? Everything from um, basic containerization to microservice architecture applications. The, the sort of old way of doing things, right, the, the standard three-tier application model is really no longer representative of what's being done in the industry. There's a lot more complexity in the IT environment than sort of ever before. And what that really means is that we have a lot more, um, you know, surfaces to manage and understand. And if your role is to be an operations team, a DevOps team, that complexity directly translates into, quite frankly, making your job quite a bit harder. Uh, there's also, at the exact same time, we have this increase in complexity, an acceleration of the security risks that are out there. So we know from you know, industry trend experience from our own experience, you know, as, as a software vendor and a product team, that the number of vulnerabilities that are reported year to year is accelerating. And if you just look at the log4j vulnerability, which really sort of capitalizes on the, the type of problems that can be reported, Definitely not the first uh, vulnerability of its of its kind, right? Very significant vulnerabilities have been reported uh, pre in previous years, but Log4j being the most recent, that really sort of exemplified the need for um, having good understanding of what your environment consists of, right? We now have started talking about things like software bill of materials, and that that need to have an understanding of your environment is a direct correlation to uh, this acceleration of the security risks, right? You need to understand what is in your environment so that you can understand your security posture. And then sort of ever present is this challenge on people resources, right? Skilled, knowledgeable resources are at a premium. There's, you know, the, the current job market is very challenging. And to kind of put it bluntly, Webster skills are not the kind of thing you learn in college. So when you combine all of these three things, you know, growing complexity, new ways of doing things, accelerating security space, and deep technical skills required in a lot of cases, you have serious business challenges that are impact impacting these mission critical applications, which are, you know, so often Webster applications. So what this looks like in terms of how WebSphere is tackling this space, it's really represented by the portfolio view that we have uh, that really started last year, but we're really refining it into this year and of course beyond, where we have two key elements of the overall portfolio. We have IBM WebSphere Hybrid Edition. Hybrid Edition is the uh, the, the new amalgamation of our, all of our previous WebSphere releases. So included in it are traditional WebSphere, right, ND, and what we sometimes call as base, standalone WebSphere. Um, also included within it is WebSphere Liberty and all the flavors of that, including support for open liberty. And 
Liberty presents a very interesting opportunity uh, because what Liberty allows us to do is deliver a, a runtime model that is supporting zero migration and continuous delivery at the same time. And we're going to talk about that uh, kind of in the next slide. But that is a piece of the overall story where the IBM uh, Webster strategy is really investing to help teams stay on top of the, the latest security posture so that they can be uh, secure and staying ahead of bad actors. Complementing what we have in Webster Hybrid Edition is Webster Automation, whose purpose in life is really to help automate the routine care and feeding that goes into maintaining applications and maintaining uh, IT middleware because we know that the vast majority of the cost of applications is not in its development. It's actually in the, the maintenance and the operation. So when you look at these two pieces combined and we start to apply automation to new and existing environments, we really get value out of getting time back for teams, improving our security posture, reducing our overall risk. So. One of, the, one of the things that uh, I'm, I want to touch on as part of this, but not deep dive too deeply, uh, is, is the fact that we have support in Liberty to enable continuous security with the Liberty Runtime and DevOps. What we mean by continuous security here is there are two key aspects of Liberty that make staying on top of the latest security fixes, staying on top of the latest security patches, really, really easy. Number one, Liberty has a zero migration policy. What that means is we don't change the behavior of your configuration. We don't remove features from runtime. Essentially, you can update to the latest version, whether that's, um, you know, a, a big jump in terms of, you know, uh, maybe you're on a version that's a year old, or maybe you're just doing the incremental releases, uh, which we do every four weeks you can have the confidence that your application will continue to run undisrupted because we have that zero migration promise. We also now have a continuous delivery schedule, which means we have a full GA ready, production ready release of Liberty every four weeks. And when you combine those two things, the fact that we won't break your application and that we deliver a fully ready, fully production supported release every four weeks. When you're in those highly dynamic environments like uh, uh, you know, DevOps, CICD, building containerized images, automatic deploy, right? Sort of the, the sort of state of the art nirvana of where you want to be in terms of your development practices, you can always be rebasing to the latest version of Liberty, getting the latest ver the latest security patches, getting the latest performance fixes, all of that without the risk of your application regressing. And that's one piece of the overall story where uh, WebSphere is really focused on making it easier than it ever has been for teams to stay up to date and stay secure. Mike, that, that's one I'd chime in on, because I, yeah, I think when talking to um, customers that I work with too, that's the zero migration and the, the single stream continuous delivery is it's actually a really big game changer and it saves it ends up saving a lot of money basically for companies just because the the effort to do a migration is no longer something they have to plan as something that's a quarterly or a um you know semi-annual kind of upgrade that requires a lot of retest and re um reassessment of the platform so this it's it is a game changer to have zero migration and and that's um you know the feedback that that i've heard from customers has been really positive and they they wish that more products that that they had that were actually sort of following the same approach yeah ab absolutely absolutely so so that's you can think of the value around liberty as sort of a a core feature a core capability of the liberty runtime the the uh, and that that feeds directly into that Webster Hybrid Edition story that I talked about. The the other element and where we're going to deep dive a little bit today on you know what we've delivered and where we're going and how it fits into the big picture is 
Webster Automation itself. So Webster Automation is a new offering from IBM. Its purpose is to help automate Webster operations without changing your existing environment. So you can you can use this pretty much anywhere you're running Webster today. Um, it can connect to the existing environments that you have. You don't need to change. You don't have to be in containers. You don't have to be, you know, using modern tools. You can you can plug this into the environments that you have today and quickly unlock increase uh, security, resiliency, and performance because Webster Automation's goal is to reduce that manual toil, remove that sort of routine care and feeding, and help you protect, heal, and optimize your Webster environments. And the reason we're talking about all of this automation is because automation really is a key element of a modern application environment, right? You want to be able to build and modernize your applications using the latest technology, you want to be able to deploy that in your environment of choice, whether that is a public cloud like you know AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, or IBM Cloud, or whether that remains on premises, you want that flexibility to take those applications that you're building, that your team is responsible for, and deploy them in the environment of choice, and really operate them as effortlessly as possible. And that's where the, the sort of loop of the story comes in. Webster Automation helps you manage the applications that you're building, whether they're on traditional Webster uh, ND or you know on newer Liberty cloud native containerized deployments. Wherever your Webster is deployed, Webster Automation is able to help you operate those things. And I want to talk a little bit about what we've done and where we're going for that. But before we talk about the, the what, I, I really want to talk about the why really briefly. The, the benefits around automation, some are very obvious, I think. Some are perhaps less obvious. And, and maybe one of the less obvious ones is actually around the risk dimension. You know, automation has been great at doing, um, you know, t taking away repetitive tasks, uh, whether that is you know, the emerging self-driving technology or something as uh, ubiquitous as a dishwasher, right? That's a, that's a kind of automation that means you're spending less time doing those more tedious tasks and you're able to spend your time doing, you know, more interesting, more complicated tasks. But with, with automation, you can actually reduce your overall risk. And WebSphere Automation in particular has been designed to help reduce specific elements of risk. So not only is there you know, risk of human error that's always present when you know, people are involved um, and human error can result in things like downtime, there's also a very specific element of risk that we focused on based on customer feedback, which is that security posture risk, being able to know exactly what vulnerabilities are impacting your environment without the need to have a human you know, read, understand, possibly do a little bit of guesswork because maybe your, you know, your inventory information might be act, it might be out of date, may not be wholly accurate. By giving you that real time, accurate understanding of what is my inventory and where am I vulnerable, Webster Automation can help you reduce the security risks by giving you that information at your fingertips and also um, helping you reduce your overall risk by deploying uh, fixes faster. So when you sort of combine the reduction in risk, whether that's hu the human element or the security element, and couple that with automation that helps you reach your goals faster, decrease the time to do the task, um, also helps you maintain uh, what I like to call patching SLAs, right? Most enterprises have some requirement that says you need to be patched within 30 60, 90 days, you can help reach those environments, those uh, compliance states faster if you take advantage of automation. So that's really the big, the big picture value of why automation is interesting. It's not just giving time back, although that's absolutely a key element. It's also that risk avoidance and the ability to you know, meet objectives and stay compliant in a, uh, a less amount of time. So the, the, what, what, the what we have been focused on kind of over the last 18 months has really been around uh, helping customers understand their security posture, 
right? It's that risk element that I just talked about. We, we have delivered the ability for Webster Automation to help you proactively uh, provide CVE protection for your environment. The reason we did that is because that was our customer's number one piece of feedback. That was where their biggest challenge was. It was very clearly their number one pain point. And we know that the cost of a data breach is significant. Actually, IBM recently published um, a, a survey result where we found that a, the average cost of a data breach for a financial services company is close to $6 million, right? That's very significant cost for a data breach. And one of the best ways to stay on top of a data breach is to have the latest security posture. Nothing is going to make you immune. We all, we all hopefully know that, right? Security is always a moving target. But by having tools, technology, processes, and practices that help you stay on top of those latest security patches, make sure that you are not leaving, you know, any um, unpatched vulnerabilities out there so that a, a hacker or an exploiter could find those, take advantage of those, you, you're, you're in the best security posture that you can, quite frankly, possibly be. The way we're expanding this capability, there's a lot of you know uh, small things that we're we're looking at that we have on the backlog. We have a, a and actually I think a really good tool that IBM's provided globally um, calls uh, called our Ideas Portal, where customers can go and open feature requirements. Um, but what we're sort of looking at in the near term is being focused on expanding the uh, the, the platforms and the uh, products that WebSphere Automation is capable of working with. So we know WebSphere Automation is capable of working with um, WebSphere itself, right? WebSphere and D, standalone WebSphere based. Uh, we've also expanded our um, testing to include other embedded WebSphere scenarios. So things like uh, FileNet and um, uh, what was previously WebSphere Portal and is now an HCL product. Um, the, those products that support and include WebSphere as their core runtime technology, uh, WebSphere Automation is also able to help automate those environments as well. Um, we're also expanding you know, the ability to deploy on um, Z Linux. WebSphere Automation itself uh, can manage WebSphere on WAS for ZOS and Z Linux, uh, but it's, it was limited to deployment on um, essentially x86, uh, x64 architectures. Uh, we're going to expand that there as well, just to really broaden the aperture of where WebSphere automation can be deployed, where it can get can get value. Mike, I see your, a Yeah, go a ahead, please, Don. Question in the Q&A. Yeah. Um, question was that uh, WebSphere automation requires OpenShift, mm -hmm. correct? Uh, which is correct. Yep. And uh, many customers running WebSphere may not have OpenShift. Is there a plan to offer WebSphere automation outside of OpenShift? The sh yeah, so that's a very good question. Uh, the short answer is that is something we are closely looking at. Um, to, to be fair, that feedback that you know OpenShift is kind of an inhibitor to adoption, the OpenShift dependency of WebSphere automation itself, we we are we're hearing that we're taking that to heart and we're looking at what the options are. Um, quite frankly, I don't have a firm statement to to say on this this call at this time. But um, that's the not to be fair. That's not the first we've heard of that. That is a piece of feedback that we've been carrying for uh, you know at least a few months, and we were we are looking at ways to expand the deployability. I'll say of WebSphere automation itself. Um, one thing that I do want to clarify, WebSphere Automation can manage the WebSphere app server instances wherever they are deployed. They do not need to be in OpenShift. They absolutely can be, and, uh, and most, quite frankly, most often are, running in virtual machine environments, possibly running on bare metal, right? The If you sort of look at the, I would say the, the average distri distribution of where WebSphere is deployed today, uh, the vast majority of it, the, in th the things that we've been building for the last you know, 20 years, those tend to be in virtual machines. We do see a lot of adoption of containers. That is absolutely the direction we're seeing from a lot of our customers. WebSphere Automation can help you in, with WebSphere deployed in both of those cases. 
Um, the OpenShift dependency today is a, a deployment of Webster automation, the solution itself requirement, not a dependency on where Webster is running. Uh, but to sort of summarize, Yes, we do depend on OpenShift today for WebSer Automation's deployment. Yes, we are looking at alternatives. I don't have a timeline or a set of um, details to share at this time, but uh, that's a good question, so thank you. Mike, one thing I'll jump into, the, I, I think it was actually pretty interesting, the, the new, new capability from earlier this year where uh, WebSer Automation now has the ability to, to actually be able to patch um, systems so be able to patch your application server whether it's Webster application server or Liberty and, and in particular I mean the if you think about the steps that, that people have to go through today to, to do that and to your point earlier of consistency reducing the risk um, you know there, there are a lot of, of of things that you have to get right to do this and you know it start, starts all the way back from you have to have a good inventory of your entire WebSphere estate. And then for some companies that can be pretty huge. It can be hundreds of servers. Um, assuming that you know that um, and that you've got a daily kind of up-to-date current view of that, uh, when vulnerabilities are coming in, you need to be able to kind of match vulnerabilities against your server estate, which again, doing that manually is not the kind of stuff that anybody really wants to spend their whole day trying to, to track down. Um, once you kind of identify which things are unpatched, you want to prioritize all that kind of stuff. And if you have that kind of in one place to be able to look across your estate, that, that really helps to, you know, reduce the amount of time, whether you want to do it by most severe CF CVSS scores, or you want to look at it more, um, from the perspective of certain servers that you know are, are mission critical. Um, and then actually doing the patching effort, making sure that the patch um, was applied and that the vulnerability has been um, addressed, you know, verifying the, the vulnerability has been re remediated is another step that you have to, to typically do manually. Um, and then after all that, you need to, to obviously have the ability to answer uh, answer audit kind of questions like, hey, did I actually patch that within the SLA that I said I was going to patch that within? Um, whether, like you said, 30, 60, 90 days, different companies take different numbers. But the point is you need some way of being able to show here's here's how long we were vulnerable to that particular issue. So this one, I just thought I would put a little exc exclamation point on because I think it's this is a pretty important capability for for people. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, gl I'm glad you did, Don, because that that really is the point, right? Making it easy to know when you're vulnerable and making it easy to demonstrate that you have been uh, updated, right? And, and we've made it even easier with our latest release where you can actually now do that directly from within the tool. That, that really is the core value. And if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, we've done uh, quite a few sessions around how all of this works. Uh, we've got you know uh, previous webinars where we've done uh, you know demos and sort of technology deep dives to best to talk about how all of that stuff works. But if if tracking security vulnerabilities is something your team is responsible for, if deploying security vulnerabilities is something your team is responsible for, uh, we we honestly think web server automation can help, and we we've kind of built it as a uh, fit for purpose solution for web seer user needs. And, and that really feeds into the the second scenario that uh, we want to talk about. And it's it's again a specific web seer user need, which is around the, the general health of your application. One of the things that we delivered at the end of last year was integration with Instana to be able to proactively detect and analyze memory leaks before they actually cause uh, an outage. So through, through that collaboration with the Instana team, what we ended up delivering was uh, a set of capabilities where through Instana being the monitoring solution, looking at the core metrics that are happening within uh, the WebSphere JVM, we can actually detect that memory leak kind of while it's in progress. And then WebSphere Automation gets notified because it has all of the information about the the specifics of the WebSphere environment, 
it can reach in, gather the diagnostic information that it needs, you know, primarily the memory dump, uh, the, the heap dump, and bring that back to WebSphere Automation for automated analysis. Um, and the end result of that is you actually get a report without needing to involve a person to go off and do all of these steps that can be shared with the application development team or the application vendor if it's a you know a third party application so that they they can track down the source of that memory leak. And we were actually, I think Don can can can, can confirm, we were kind of surprised that that was still uh kind of such a pervasive problem, but it makes sense, right? We're always building applications. We're always building new things. And when you make changes to applications, when you build new things, they're not perfect, right? WebSphere has been around for 20 years. Um, it's been beat up, you know, countless times. WebSphere really isn't the source of the memory leak. It's the new applications that are being built or the applications, you know, that you're, you're picking up from third-party vendors that tend to have these uh, these problems. And that's a, that's a maintenance nightmare for, uh, the operations team. Cause generally the operations team are not the people that built that application. They may not have the skills to jump in and diagnose a memory leak, uh, as deeply as web store automation can or a developer would. And that, that automated diagnostics with the automated analysis result is really, really useful for reducing that time to resolution because a lot of times we find customers just accept the fact that this is a, a buggy application and implement things like nightly restarts. That doesn't solve the problem if you have a you know high workload in that application and it experiences a fatal memory leak before the, the, the nightly restart cycle. It, this is another place where I think automation comes in handy because trying to do this manually means that you have to be at the right moment, you have to be collecting the diagnostics from your servers. So if you if you've got a leaking app, you can't just wait, you know, and randomly take a, a heap dump, for example, to to try to assess the, you know, what's what's in your heap and what's growing and what the leaking objects are and all that kind of stuff. You have to do it at the right moment so that you've got enough objects that are in the heap that it makes it evident what the what the leak is. So that kind of stuff does lend itself nicely to automation where um in stana would detect that you know from the trend of uh, you know the upward trend of of used heap memory is is increasing over time and it will notify WebSphere automation and WebSphere automation will immediately go get the diagnostics so it the timeliness is just a cool aspect of of this that makes automation kind of uh in practice more more effective than trying to do this manually yep and and that that extending that automation so that it can be timely, responsive, right? Not burdening the operations team. That that's another area that we want to talk about because one of the areas that we're uh, also looking at integrating with is uh, a product from IBM called Watson AI Ops, or I should say, the Cloud Pack for Watson AI Ops. Um, Cloud Pack for Watson AI Ops is all about providing AI to understand the very complicated universe of logs and metrics across the, frankly, the entire IT stack, right? Uh, Watson AI Ops is not a WebSphere specific product. Instana similarly is not a WebSphere specific product. They both provide the ability for, uh, for monitoring a broad set of things. And the value that Watson AI Ops can provide is it has visibility into logs from WebSphere, your database, MQ, right? Pick a variety of technologies. It can bring all of that together, apply AI to that, and look for patterns in the chaos to best understand, you know, where your health, where your health events are coming from, and provide um, recommended actions, next steps. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Don to talk a little bit about where we're going with that work, because we think this is kind of the, ne the next big area of innovation for uh, WebSphere automation, but also, you know, other parts within IBM as well. So, Don. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So I, I think that this, um, as Mike says, this is kind of one of the next big things, which I think the... Today, today, if you look at the most recent release of Watson AI Ops, they've got some interesting capability in that 
uh, for log analysis. And in particular, they're not, you know, they're not replacing your log aggregation system if you've got Splunk, Humio, Log DNA, Elasticsearch, right? They're not replacing that. They're assuming that you're using um, an environment that's that has the ability to aggregate or gather your logs. And they tie into that to basically uh, look for log anomalies. And uh, we've worked on the WebSphere team, we've worked with the AI ops team to help them to be able to quickly determine if there's an anomaly in the system without requiring you know, extensive training of their system to be able to detect anomalies. And once they detect them, what they're able to do today uh, is they can give you a set of resolutions. Um, and when they say it's a resolution, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a fix to your problem. It's usually, you know, this is this is built up over our lifetime of of support and service uh, with customers that we have our own data of um, what URLs we've recommended to customers to address certain problems that have come up when different things appear in your logs. And through the AI, they're able to basically connect up those two uh, those two sides, right? So if, if I see a particular problem in the logs, then most likely the uh, the information that you're going to need is this, uh, you know this set of URLs with certain probability that the, each each one of those is the right answer for you. So what we're trying to do with the AI ops team, the next you know perhaps obvious thing to do is have AI ops. You know AI ops is doing a great job of of um, watching the logs, watching for anomalies. When when they detect something is wrong that's in a web sphere space, have them reach over to us and enable us to take the next steps to collect, um, either collect diagnostics that are appropriate to that problem or um, actually try to resolve the problem depending on what the problem is. So you can imagine AI ops kind of saying something like, hey, you've got um, SSL handshake failure log message. And we might take that as the trigger to say, okay, we've recognized that one. The most, the most likely candidate on that may be that you've got a you know, expired certificate. And if it's a self-signed certificate, we might be able to replace it, you know, uh, update that certificate with a newer certificate, for example. There's lots of other cases where it's just, you know, we know that the next diagnostic step in something is to collect a, you know, a heap dump, a Java core, um, system core. Could be a JNDI problem, you need to collect a namespace dump. Um, could be just a general liberty issue and we want to run the liberty introspectors. So there's a lot of different automatic things that we could do to take the next step based off their handoff. So have AI ops do what it's strong at, which is doing log and log analysis and log anomaly detection, have web through automation, um, take the next steps for the automation, whether that's something that is uh, just diagnostic so that you get back at least the diagnostics to be able to, to work um, more effectively on the problem or corrective um, in some cases where we actually know what to do to actually you know change your connection pool size or do something along those lines to to try to remedy the problem so that's something that we're excited about uh that we're working on now to to try to figure out how to do this the best way and as you can see from the list of automations it sort of covers a a variety of of different kinds of problems and um we're trying to start from sort of the most uh, the most common problems you might encounter first, so that we'll we'll have something uh, that that's applicable to applicable to the most people um, when we're first ready to come out with us. Yep, absolutely, and I think this this really does represent one of the largest untapped areas of value. And when we talk about you know helping you stay on top of the the routine care and feeding understanding your security posture, looking at your security vulnerabilities, right? depending on uh, your your industry, that may be something that you're doing potentially weekly, if not daily. These are the kinds of things that can be happening at that level of frequency too, right? And especially as Don said, if you've got hundreds of servers or even thousands of servers, there can be a lot of data to sift through, a lot of actions and that need to be taken because problems are maybe percolating in a variety of different spaces. The ability to apply automation to that complicated environment, that large number of servers, 
is, is really at, at the heart of the, that modern strategy. And, and that, that's kind of the, the big picture that we're looking at building, not just with a, a web sphere perspective, although this is a web sphere conversation, uh, but more broadly across IBM. So really, you can think of it, think of it as observe and automate augmented with AI-powered insights, right? So the, the conversation we just talked about was applying things like Watson AI Ops, Instana, web sphere automation to your, your web sphere state. Um, something we didn't touch on is, and there's a whole nother area of interesting uh, insight and automation is something around Turbonomic, which if you're not familiar with that, uh, that is a tool that was, uh, I, I think it's fair to say, you sort of born on the cloud to help you understand how to best capitalize on your resource utilization, right? So if you say, I've got this, a set of SLAs, I, I want to make sure that I've got you know, the following performance requirements, it can help guide you through how to you know, either give back uh, resources in your cloud deployment, maybe tune things, optimize things. Um, it's a, it's another dimension of automation, insight, observing, and value around really the, the performance of the resource utilization, not just a, you know, a sort of a correctness, correctness and health uh, dimension. So there's, a, there's really powerful stories that you know, IBM has talked about at various conferences when you bring all of these technologies together, because it's helping alleviate a lot of the, frankly, the, the, the time that is spent by operations teams sort of trying to navigate this very complicated world and doing that in an increasingly complicated environment. Yeah, Mike, on that one too, I would just suggest you know, yeah. each of these product, each of these different products has has its emphasis, and you don't need to start on day one with the entire suite, <laughs> everything on this page, right? <laughs> True. I think you you look at this and you'd probably say, well, what what's the what are the key problems I'm trying to solve? If it's if it's things like, hey, I, I need to improve the security posture and my timeliness of of applying fixes and you know, my ability to show to my auditors that I've got fixes, then maybe what you want is web sphere automation. You know, if, if you're, um, you know, struggling with, with uh, needing a proper way of, of being able to visualize your entire environment and, and um, be able to see where your bottlenecks are and that kind of stuff, you know, in Stana. So like this, each one of these kind of has their own forte. And I think the, the interesting thing about this chart in my mind, at least, is it kind of shows they all play in this automation ecosystem. Um, you don't need them all necessarily all the time or on every app, but uh, depending on what you're uh, trying to do and what you're um, you know, trying to improve on, uh, each one is, is useful in its own way. Yep, a abs absolutely. Uh, and I believe there are, I mean, there's certainly web webinar sessions around web sphere automation because we've, uh, We've done those recently. Um, I'm sure there are similar sessions around each of these products in turn. So if this if this is something that is of interest to you, there's a, there's a wealth of resources out there to get started, learn more. Um, of course, you can always reach out to your IBM representative and you know uh, have one on one sessions with us. We always we always love doing that too. So if web sphere automation sounds interesting to you, and one of the, the big ones that Don talked about, the area that we see a lot of, uh, quite frankly, customer interest in is around that security uh, vulnerability space. If you're interested in playing with web sphere automation, uh, you can learn and play with it in less than an hour by trying out our hosted trial. So the, the hosted trial is running an IBM cloud, all you need is an IBM ID and a browser. And when you log in, what you get is a real running instance of WebSphere automation and a virtual machine that has uh, traditional WebSphere and Liberty already installed and the instructions to guide you through how to use WebSphere automation, right? Focus on um, you know, configuration, the value, detecting vulnerabilities and even deploying those fixes. Um, all of that can be done uh, in you know a, a, in an hour or less with WebSphere Automation's hosted trial, 
And then if there is an environment that you want to bring this into, try it out in your own data center. We also support that. Um, you, can, you can evaluate on-prem with your own workloads uh, using our 60-day our trial. You do need to have OpenShift uh, installed in order to, to get going with that one, um, which is why we always recommend the hosted trial, right? It's quick, it's easy. Uh, it's a great way to just get hands-on and see, is this the kind of thing that um, is going to help me out in my day-to-day? And then uh, one of the things we always like to talk about is the customer advisory board. Um, this is a program that we run. Uh, it's, it's free. It's no charge. Uh, you can reach out to Claudia by Siegel, who's a, a, a peer on my team. She runs this program. And this has been an absolutely invaluable program where uh, you can get connected with product management, development, and we have regular sessions basically every Friday, uh, about 45 minutes to an hour Friday morning. And what we do is we cover a variety of topics. We do everything from, you know, the latest in roadmap planning for WebSphere to, um, you know, interesting technology sessions. We had a, a really cool one uh, about six months ago where the, the weather company actually came and talked about how they use cloud in their environment. So it's a really wide-ranging uh, area of conversation, but the, the core value for us out of the Webster uh, Customer Advisory Board is to get feedback from you candidly in a forum where we often come and ask key questions like, what are your top pain points? Um, you know, This is the roadmap. What do you think about it? What are the things that we're doing right? What are the things that we're missing? Where are you focused in sort of your technology direction? Right, it's a great avenue for that candid uh, conversation between you know your team and, and our team, so that you know together we can all be successful. So if you're interested in that, I'd highly recommend reaching out to Claudia by Siegel. Um, I find that that program to be immensely valuable. Uh, and with that, uh, Don, if you have any closing thoughts, uh, let's. I think we can probably wrap up. This has been a good good. Good conversation so far. Yeah, thanks, Mike. I think I, I'm good, so thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining.